Well, it's taken a long time, but the roof is on this thing. And not only did I get the roof on it, but I took almost a month off. And in that month, and since it took me so long to get the work done, winter's here. I mean, I don't know if you can tell from what you're seeing in the background, but I've got the rain guard building wrap on this and the rain has been falling and the building is dry and it actually snowed a little bit here last night, but it doesn't matter because Phil Rokas is on site today and we're gonna push the plumbing forward in the middle of this thing as one of the first major steps in the mechanical process that has to happen before you put the insulation and sheetrock in the walls. So brace yourselves, friends and neighbors, Phil Rokas is about to show up. A lot of people have told me that it's painful to watch me work. It doesn't hurt bad. <sighs> yeah, we'll get the tape off. There we go. Got a big hole in there because the fitting itself has to go through the hole. I'm going to be peeling black glue off my hands all night tonight. So I'm going to line up those two lines with that. Eyeballing it. You see the little marks all along there? We talked about this multiple times. Um, I do, I'm a very poor communicator and I should have actually talked more when I told you what to do. This is our drain pipe for the, in the, the, the vent and waste for the lavatory. And it should have been in that wall. So you wouldn't have to drill through this way. We just come up and go straight over there. Oh yeah. So now we're sticking the supply pipes and the water off to the side into the cabinet. No big deal. It's not like a, a mistake you made that's pertinent. Okay? Okay, that makes me feel a little better. Really helpful, actually. I was telling Ken that I got a brand new doctor for my some prescriptions I need to fill instead of the one up in Portland. Anyway, this kid's 12 or 14 years old. His doctor, oh, I shouldn't say his name, but uh, he says I had markers for prediabetes. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, I, that's, <laughs> yeah, that, but it's nothing so, anyone would suspect. I said, well, I'll change my lifestyle a little bit before you give me all these 35 prescriptions. So immediately I asked my question and he just Googles it on his phone. So I explained it. Well, I can be a doctor. I got Google. Oh no, no. I had to go to school. <laughs> oh, okay. So anyway, I take, there's 30 bucks worth of vegetables and I put it in my Ninja blender which will take a cell phone down that ninja blender. Oh, it's gross. It's really. so bad. Plus I hate vegetables. I'm <laughs> allergic to them. It tastes terrible. But anyway, I've been eating all these and, and I lost some weight. And of course you can't tell yet. Pretty soon I'm gonna have the turkey neck thing going on yeah. and I'll look like I at my age look finally. Like, look like Dr. Laura. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, so that's my nightmare for the day and I'm starving. You want all the, no, I can't have snacks. Almonds? Almonds. I can't, no, there, I can't have snacks. There'll get too many comments. All right. So we've mocked up our P-trap down there according to our template. Don't have to be absolutely perfect to the template yet, just really close. And it's not glued together. But you want to kind of get it where it's going to actually live when it glues. It's sort of close. So anyway, that's what uh, the shower is going to look like. We're going to set, go over to the shower pan and explain that. And we'll set the shower pan on there next to make sure it's right before we glue it. Okay, let's talk about this little uh, drain fitting. First of all, this thing is going on a first floor. I don't like to put these tight, this style upstairs because 
there's a rubber in there that does all the sealing and I don't know, I've seen them leak before upstairs into the ceiling. But anyway, we're just gonna install this guy. Okay, so the way it works is the pipe's really sloppy in the hole. Look in here. See how much slack there is, you know? This rubber goes over it. You know, the pipe will be sticking up a ways. And you want to cut it off so it's below the, you know, cut it off way down low accurately. And this gland screws into here. And they make a little tool that comes with it. And it shoves down on this rubber and squeezes the rubber to seal it. Okay. So I've seen these fail upstairs and they make another one of these that glues. But what, how we're installing it, it's a lot easier to use one of these to install it than gluing it, shoving it in, and hoping it's right, okay? This gives you all kinds of uh, lead way to put it in at leisure. Let's put it that way. You set it in a tub, any shower, and this is actually the floor. See this little hole and see the nut? How in the world do you get a wrench on that thing to tighten it? You know what I mean? You get a pair of channel locks, there's not, not much you can do, you know, you can fiddle with it and get in there and do it. Doesn't have to be that tight, really, but still, when you, this hole could have been that much bigger, you know, around the, the base. So, let's pretend this is just upstairs, for instance, and this is actually the flooring. Don't make a tight hole. And I got a couple of special tools, like this big giant basin wrench that'll just get in there. But see how this hole in the plywood's still too small for even my basin wrench to fit in there. So, all the pipe under here is not glued. We're going to put a little mark on here. And then we're going to cut it off a little bit below that mark, a quarter inch lower than this flush. And glue it all together. And uh, we've uh, marked the, the, all the pipes with the marker. So when we pull it apart, we can glue it together and line the marks all up. So we know that it goes back the same way. The cardboard was kind of a rough one. This one's a lot tighter of a hole. Still wobble around nicely. So when we put dirt underneath there and start packing it, we want to check it two times before we really compact it to make sure it's sticking up straight. It won't give you fits. We also need to get this base perfectly flat and level and it's rocking and rolling on something. And before we uh, get the walls up, the bottom isn't flat and level, the walls don't work, and the sliding door turns into a nightmare. There's a big old sliding winky door here. It all has to be perfectly square and level for the end of the day to work. Oh, got black stuff on me. Okay, green side up. There's going up. If this was a pipe with water in it, it'd go down. See the pipe length is below the top of this. So the pipe length, it's, it's fine. See what I mean? That's right. Come down. If I get any glue on this sweatshirt, I'm grounded. Don't get any glue on my sweatshirt either. I was always grounded for a year. Until <laughs> my mom got tired of it. Yes, yeah, she'd forget it. Didn't after affect dad a bit. He's at work. <laughs> First of all, we've got our clean out going outside. And a conduit for our water line. Uh, so there's a Maybe an 18 inch radius, it's electrical conduit. And getting the pipe to go through that first bend is the tricky part. I told Scott, just get a piece of conduit, and that's inch and a quarter, inch and a half might have been a little nicer. Anytime I run a water line into a slab, no fittings under a slab, ever, any water fittings. So if uh, anything happens with this pipe, you snake a new one in, you know. So this, is going to be the board that the siding fits around. This plumbing clean out projects right there. There's supposed to be room for that hub to, yep, that'll go in there. He's got to glue the inside. 
and here is his water line the reason he couldn't poke it out through the tape is because he already came through the tape and he's been pushing it into the dirt and that'll expand everybody to fit over a fitting Got a limited amount of time to put this on. And it'll shrink back on here. Here's our main water line coming in. And we're gonna put a water heater right back here. So we'll come across and drop down to feed the water heater. And the shower valve will be right here. We'll pick those two guys up. Then we're gonna just keep on going down the road to the sink and we're done. Well, Phil's been pecking away at this. It's a sort of a frustrating little job. There's not room to stretch out. It's nothing but cuts and clamps and holes, but he's got her on the run. So he's running his water lines. The waste and vent is pretty much in and it's all going approximately according to plan. Back in the day, we'd file on these guys and totally ruin them. Now you just drop an insert into these. Of course, the insert costs as much as a new bit. Used to cost. Okay. And then you just tighten up the set screw. It's sharp again. Pex pipe needs to be strapped every 32 inches by our code. Uh. Okay, we're gonna run the, our Pex lines to that bay. And instead of just making it perfectly straight stuff, you won't be able to see it when the sheetrock's on there. We're just going to make the holes go crooked into this bait where we want to go. And uh, another point with this PEX, you, you like to have uh, snakeage going through everything so it can expand and contract. It expands and contracts a lot when it gets warm and hot and cold. So if it's you got a straight piece of PEX fitting the fitting and it shrinks, it's going to tug on the fittings. Not that it matter too much, but what I'm getting at, if, it's, if the pipe's going through like a snake, there's expansion room for everything to expand and contract without it pulling on a fitting or pulling on a strap or something like that. Anyway, that's one of my theories. Do you know where the fart fan is going to go and leave the building? See that shower pan? We went to a great deal of trouble to locate the drain just right and make sure the toilet was far enough away from the edge of those round sliding doors that Delta said would be just the cat's meow. And when Phil and I were roughing in for this bathroom and he got a look at the box that this came in, he said, you know, I've heard those are hard to put in. But then we both looked at each other and said, nah, we can figure that out. And so we roughed it in. And now it's time to actually get out the instructions and locate the pan and fasten it down and get the shower valve in where it goes. And what I have discovered is this thing is a real challenge. No, no, wait, let me say that again. What I've discovered is this thing is a nightmare. It's going to take me probably three hours to reposition nine of these studs or add additional studs. They have to be in specific locations. This vent is tangled up with some of the backing that has to go in, so I'm gonna have to sort of um, improvise and invent a way to provide the backing there. And in general, it illustrates something that's really true. Amanda and Ben went down to a box store and came back with what they thought would be just sort of a mid-grade, not the cheapest, not the most expensive, something that would fit and was represented to be just about right. And they didn't have any way to evaluate the complexity. And Phil and I should have put the brakes on immediately. No, you should get something more industry standard, something less prone to disappointment and frustration and additional labor. So the takeaway here is be careful when you pick something that's outside of the box, when you pick something that's outside of sort of 
the normal approach to solving a problem in construction because even if it's not more expensive when you pay for it, it could end up being way more expensive by the time you're done paying for it. So we've made a little headway in a lot of time. We have figured out what needs to happen with the seam right here and the two different pieces of the surround. We figured out a reasonable place to put the uh, valve through the forest of studs that have ended up in there. Well, we're just about to commit ourselves to something uh, irreversible. And that is I'm going to put some mortar mix right in there and build it up just a little proud and then set the shower pan down in there and tap it down to where everything is as level as we can make it before we put the walls up. The key thing is that the mud base will not rebound. If it goes down too far and then the shower pan ends up coming to rest above it, there's going to be an airspace in there which will work over time and it'll cause that fiberglass floor to fail. I mean, there's a reason these things are relatively inexpensive. And so you do the best you can and then just hope that you get plenty of time out of them. In a shop situation like this, this shower is probably only going to be used, what, 30 times in 30 years? And so it probably is going to be just fine. But if this was in a bathroom in a house where you have kids and teenagers and where it's used two or three times every day, I just wouldn't trust it. But in this case, I think it's going to be fine. I got the wrong trowel, but that's all right. So I batch this stuff with hot water. I mean, just right straight hot only. It's a cold day, but that stuff's probably 80 degrees, which hopefully means it's gonna get hard sooner rather than later. Try to get the cement away from the pipe so it can float and move around a tiny bit. Okay. We saved you the pain of watching us bolt these two segments together. The holes were misaligned. We got the silicone in before we realized it had not been machined properly from the factory. Needless to say, Phil was not pleased. And when Phil's not, and Phil, when Phil ain't happy, ain't nobody happy, okay? So we've got that healed up, and now I'm putting a bead of silicone around the bottom, and then we're gonna put this thing in for better or for worse. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah, didn't say. Probably, we're just barely putting it back under the steps, not clear around the corner. We're okay. Let's go back like that. Oh boy, we're working on the seam. I need to cut this off a little bit. This our pipe's a little bit high. This uh, rubber tub drain thingy, forget what they call them, um, uses compression on the rubber where this gland nut pinches pushes down on the rubber, there's a little taper on there that pinches it around the pipe. And I don't ever like to use these on an upstairs situation. These, and I uh, always use just a solid glued one if it's upstairs. Down on the basement, you almost have to use one of these because it's hard to glue and set the tub and, and get the, the shower all level. You gotta put it in and out 25 times. And so this is the way to do it on a ground floor in a slab. So this rubber, I'm probably making a mistake by putting that in there because my pipe might be just a hair tall. Probably not. Let me get this rubber pushed down. Anytime you put a rubber on anything, don't ever use WD-40 or anything to make it slide or less oily. You always use soap because it'll always slide with rubber. Sometimes the rubber reacts to the oil you're putting on it. So don't ever use oil. On an old, on a, 
something. Always try to use soap if you need to. Okay, so this pipe is too tall because there's a tool that spans these uh, gaps with a screwdriver slot you tighten this up with. I mean, you could sit there and tighten it just fine, but we need to cut off a little bit of this pipe. How are you gonna do that, you ask, without a Dremel tool and smoking up the house, but I've got a tool for that. I'm gonna leave the rubber in there, get it pushed down a little bit, and the cutting wheel won't hurt it. Okay. I'll push it down below where we think we're cutting it. One of the things that, part of my situational awareness, situational awareness um, program, notice that this is gonna rub on the shower if I spin it around. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna make it a little bit deeper and not use the, the, the stop to touch the pipe. Just let it burn on the fiberglass. I'll just kind of watch it. That black mark will go away eventually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All the grease and crap they're gonna be showering on, it'll be fine. Okay, so we're gonna take a little piece of cardboard and put it under here just for a good time. And These rollers keep it square to the pipe, and since I'm not pushing this down to the pipe, I have to use some sort of skills. Good luck with that. Oh, you've done it, you've done it, look at that. There Ladies it is, gentlemen. look, look at that. it. A little more than I wanted to. Hope I didn't cut it off too short. Common with me. This guy here is really cool, except for it'll fall down the hole, and it's really a pisser to get out because it goes in there crooked and a magnet don't get it out. So we want to stuff a little bit of newspaper in there if you had a it's half a brain. We don't care. We're going to take the risk. Just be aware. Anytime you work around an open drain, plug it up. It's kind of a cheesy little tool and it'll blow up any second if you get too much force on it. I'm going to make sure the rubber is up against that. And that's how that works. Nice. Put the lid on it so you don't drop goodies down there. You put one of these showers in with a glued goodie upstairs in the upstairs shower and it's leaking through the ceiling. First of all, go upstairs and take a screwdriver and, and kind of wiggle this rim and see if it's loose because that's where the leak's coming from. It doesn't really matter because you're going to tear the ceiling out anyway to fix it and to get rid of the moisture problem. but. That's a real common problem with an upstairs shower. That's why I don't want to use a rubber one upstairs because they'll loosen up and, uh, you know, when the tub flexes from standing on it, you know, it, it loosens up the seal and then it leaks upstairs to the sheetrock. Here's our shower valve and a lot of times you, here's the mounting holes for it to screw it to the wall from the back side. It, it's super inconvenient because I needed to, this, this stupid shower glues to the wall. We'll get to that someday. And uh, it was just difficult to not put this shower valve in after the whole shower was in. So we drilled the hole last, thank goodness. And the the chrome plate is sandwiching this to the shower, basically. We'll put a two by four here and maybe get one screw into it to hold it. But we can get two in it's there, It's fine, it's not a, any big deal. It's just that when you mount a shower valve, it's nice to have it nice and solid. It's really important with a tub spout leg coming out of it so the tub spout doesn't move back and forth, you know, it's solid to the tub and don't leak between it. Anyway, that's not here, neither here nor there. We're done finally with that. So this rockite is amazing stuff. If you mix it up until it is flowable, it'll just lay there for a long time and then go off very quickly and become hard. And it also is giving off a lot of heat. We're gonna mix it up into a plastic consistency, more like putty, which is very little water needed or mixed for a long time. But that's a look at a flowable mix right there. Truly flowable and plenty warm already.
that's after seven minutes. So here is another little test batch. That's just a little bit of rockite, and I'm going to put a very small amount of water in it and knead it with my hands until it has kind of a plastic consistency. It's easy to get too much water. I'm just going to put just some drips in here. You know, a couple teaspoons. And kind of mix it up. Get it on my fingers so I can get a little chemical burn. Now it says to do this for a minute or a minute and a half, and it will become softer. Okay, I'm going to let that sit for about four or five minutes. Okay, it's starting to tighten up. I'm disrupting it, of course, but learn, learn, learn. See, so you put a little water on there, it gets glossy, trowelable. I think it's going to work good. With this stuff this thick, and I put it in there, it'll just run out. And it's just a super critical timing issue where you put this junk in so you're not constantly shoving it back in because it's dripping back out. I've got, a, rub I've got a rubber float that'll help us a little bit. A lot of times if I'll set a toilet, if the concrete ain't perfectly flat and you set the toilet down and it rocks, guys will put little plastic shims around and mess around. But if if you put a bunch of rockite down, so there's a big flat area of it and set the toilet, when you go back to take the toilet back off, the rockite don't fall all off. You can just put the toilet right back on it. If you just were to put rock, put the grout around the edge, and you pull a toilet layer, the little thin piece of grout around the toilet would just flake away. to do this one because it's so cold out and uh, this stuff gets so hard that I've seen them patch uh, cement slabs with it where semi trucks are driving and after a year the slabs wore down there's all these bumps and it's rockite. Hard as a rock. Hard as a rock. Then it's rockite. 30 minutes. Phil has been so patient with me. I mean he has accommodated my impulse to try to save my kids some money by letting a carpenter do some plumbing and it brings plenty of rework and extra work and you know opportunities for jokes but that's not all bad and it's certainly not a reason to only do what you're familiar with because if you keep doing what you've always done you're going to keep getting what you've always got and that only will carry us just so far so thank you Phil Rokas we're just about ready to inspect this thing and in the meantime thanks for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work